Hi, I'm Sophia Real, and I'm a member at Community Lutheran Church, located at the crossroads of Route 20 and Omar Road in Omar, Delaware, just north of Frankfurt. We have undertaken a project to archive our history and began with an interview with Bev Stalnack, or one of our remaining original members, who introduced us to how we came to gather together under the leadership of her husband, Bob Oram. This segment can be viewed on our blogger as well as YouTube. The second in our series was the building of our new sanctuary. This too can also be seen on our blogger and on YouTube. Today, I'm proud to introduce you to our third in the series, which is a film that was taken in June 1994 in the original building, which is now used as Luther Hall. On this film, you will see the dedication of the church site and during our liturgy, officiated by Pastor Bauer and assisted by Pastor John Rainey, we have several visiting pastors as well as representatives from the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America who join us that Sunday to offer well-wishing and good words for the future of community. You will find this of interest as well as the beautiful music that was presented that day and the hopes for the future. The film is an interesting one. It runs about 45 minutes and I'm sure you will find it of interest. If you would like to learn more about our work at Community Lutheran Church, join us on a Sunday morning for liturgy. We offer two liturgies at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. and we also offer Sunday school at our 10.30 liturgy. Please feel free to join us any Sunday. You will be most welcomed. And now, it gives me great pleasure to run this film for you.
Let us read it responsibly. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing. Within the gates of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city. And as a city to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. The assembly of Israel to praise the name of the Lord. For there are the thrones of judgment. The thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls. And quietness within your towers. For my brethren and my companions' sake, I pray for your prosperity. Because of the house, the Lord our God, I will seek to do you good. Thank <laughs> you. 
continue to bless us and guide us along life's pathway as we have come together to praise your name and to ask your blessing. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in the holy, in the holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you members of his church. In the community of God's people, you have learned from his word, God's loving purpose for you and all creation. You have been called to be witnesses of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, therefore, I ask you to profess the faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the, serve, the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended.
some of the views of Norman Clark and Andy Alder, and that fiscal fund, the lecture, the cross, and another cross out there, because one of the guys in the church didn't like the first one. He said, you've got to redesign it. So this is what we have now. I don't know what's going to happen in three weeks if you didn't like that, right? I've got to pick on George Lustig. Uh, we also just have so many lady people who are uh, working so hard to make this happen. Uh, there are going to be refreshments today uh, after service. Uh, we were going to have barbecue chicken like we did in the but we didn't do that. Uh, this is a little lighter fare. Uh, we are going to uh, try to feed you at least a little bit. Uh, we are happy that all of you are here, and so I don't uh, offend somebody. I'm not going to go around and introduce all of you. Uh, we do have all the dignitaries here, but I think we can find everywhere. And all these clergy people, I know they're going to be critiquing what I've said and haven't said, but that's not used to that. Now I can have this job. John is our pastor, in case you didn't know that. Uh, we are a preaching point of Reformation with the church. Reformation has shepherded us and guided us and fought with us and all kinds of things over the past uh, three years to make this happen. And we're very thankful, and I do have to point out John. There's John has been writing checks uh, for us and taking care of all the finances uh, and putting up with Dave and Bob as they fight the kids about who's going to pay what when. Uh, but we're happy that we're here uh, today. At this point, oh, thank you, choir. I'm going to end up here.
also in the Del Mar Planning Ministry Planning Committee have had the strong support of the Division of Outreach, Outreach Representative. Um, he attends lots of meetings and comes up with ideas of support. And one of those things of support that is very, very real is the finances to purchase this building came from your benevolence dollars through the Division of Outreach. And so I'd like to introduce the Reverend Dr. Jerry Kansas. saying it all around the Senate that Delaware in many different capacities has been turning the clock ahead on mission in the ELCA. There are a lot of places in the ELCA where I'm trying to get people to do things. This is one of those sites, Community Lutheran, where I try to slow people down. <laughs> and it's, it's been an exciting endeavor to work with people like Bob and David, who have been my major contacts, and also through the Del Marva Planning Ministry Planning Committee. Um, the vision here and the energy here and the excitement here um, has always been something that's been rather infectious to me as I travel around the mid-Atlantic region representing the ELCA. And so we are particularly excited today because what this building means and what this mission means is that there are new models for doing church development in the ELCA. That's what my office is all about, and we're always excited to learn from people who are committed to mission and figure out how to do it. And if there has been any group that I have worked with in the last five years who has done a good job of figuring out how to make it work, it's the folks here at Community Lutheran. So that's exciting. I want to tell you that there are very few ministries in the ELCA that are not yet organized as bonafide congregations, whatever that means. Bonafide congregations of the ELCA that already have a building. As a matter of fact, I was in Chicago last week and just checked on the computer how many non-organized congregations have a building. And from coast to coast and north to south, there are two. And you happen to be one of them. What that means is that the ELCA, and not that we're all knowing, because you know that we aren't.
share with you today, and I am on vacation just over there in Lewis, and so uh, it was uh, it was kind of fun coming from there over here today to be with you, and I uh, I wish that I lived uh, that close uh, year round so that I could get over here more often because it's just delightful to be with the people of God here at Omer. <laughs> And, you know, I, I'm reflecting a little bit about this, and, and uh, indeed, as, in, in my role as, as dean, I had uh, a good deal of involvement with you, and uh, again, that infectious, uh, um, I would call, expression of faith that, that is here uh, was just wonderful for all of us. And, and I might add, by the way, um, I'm hoping that you know that uh, John Randy is the new dean of our conference, and so I'm Please to be uh, taking that hat and giving it to John. <laughs> you know how she is. <laughs> I truly am on vacation. <laughs> but you know, I've been thinking about uh, the how so many times in the church we discover that really the what is new is what is old. I was thinking about that theme, and I was thinking about when the L D W came out. Uh, which, as you know, we still call the new book. Uh, 20 years now, is it almost? And remember when it first came out, and the two Lord's Prayer versions of the Lord's Prayer appear side by side, and so we have the option, do you want to pray the one in the left-hand column or the one in the right-hand column? And so many people would refer uh, to the one in the left-hand column and the Jacob B. and Our Father who are in heaven as the old Lord's Prayer. And then we had to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, exploring on that, and take a look and realize that the ones in the right hand column was really the older form of the Lord's Prayer, words which went back uh, more biblically accurate. And so that was a, a learning for us. I think here in the in the um, the coming together of the people of God here in Omer, what you've experienced is some of the uh, of the old way actually becoming what we think is a new way. Uh, this is the New Testament way, isn't it, of the church coming together, the people of God uh, meeting together and being moved by the Spirit and uh, preaching and sharing in study of God's Word and then being church, uh, many more than two or three who are gathered. And so that's what we have here. Uh, it's a tribute also uh, to, the, uh, to the old way uh, and it's being new way. And we, the church, uh, in our organized way, maybe have lost some of that. And uh, it's good for us to be reminded that uh, this still is the way. So thanks. Thanks for, uh, thanks for uh, the privilege of, uh, of being here at the mic. Committee to please stand for a minute. Garrett, Jane, 
Uh, Andrea, come on. Uh, Robert Orta, Jim Tufin, Bruce Bacher, Jim Ron, Dave, Mary Kay. Uh, so you can see that there have been a great variety of people who have been involved in this, and we are just thrilled to death. And I know that the other members of the committee would share with me and say congratulations to you. Uh, I'll end by saying that if we all paid attention to the second lesson this morning, there were some very, very appropriate words there. And if I misquote them, I'm still fairly close to them. It is the Lord who urges us in love. He's done that for you. Thank you.
And uh, when Bob Orham, who I knew as a town council representative before I knew him as the lay leader of this, of this particular congregation, uh, talked to me a little bit about the ministerium. We invited him, you know, he said, sure, come on, this, this is great. Um, one of the stories that I wanted to, or the story I wanted to, to bring to our attention, sometimes when when a congregation gets a new building, or, or a building in, in this case, sometimes you think you sort of have reached the end of the road. You know, you think, gee, we've done it, we're here, we look around, it's really quite a, quite a beautiful structure, and, and uh, you tend to sit back and get your feet up on the pews a little bit and say, you know, this, this is fine, let people come to us. Well, one of the things in the ministerium we always concentrate on is getting Christ out into the community through what the members of the churches do. And uh, if you read the first chapter of Mark, you find out that uh, uh, one of the first things that Jesus did after he collected his disciples, first of all, he went to the synagogue and uh, there was a, uh, a person who was uh, possessed with demons, and so Jesus exercised the demons in the, in the synagogue. And then he left and he went over Peter's, uh, Simon Peter's house, and Simon Peter's mother-in-law was sick. And, and I always thought that Simon Peter was very gracious because who wants to wonder all well? But <laughs> <laughs> so, I will go remember. <laughs> Is this going out so Only to your mother-in-law. Anyway, so uh, he invited Jesus over and Jesus uh, touched uh, his, uh, Simon Peter's mother-in-law and healed her. And then the community started coming to where Jesus and the disciples were. And Jesus and the disciples worked all night, healing and casting out demons and teaching and so forth. And the following morning, if you remember, Jesus was, was alone in prayer. And the disciples couldn't find him, so they sent somebody to, to, to find Jesus. And they, uh, one of the disciples came and, and talked to Jesus and said, Jesus, they're, they're waiting for us back at, at Peter's house, you know. Uh, they really love us there. We have a home there. We, we, can, we can set up shop there. I'm sort of paraphrasing for it. But, uh, <laughs> you know, he, he said, he said, we need to go back. And Jesus said, but our place is in the next towns, or our mission is in the next towns. And I would hope that this congregation understand that, that even though this is an exciting day for you and that you have a building, your mission is not here. Your mission is out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of the churches in the community are welcome to you and want to help and want to do everything that we can to celebrate Jesus Christ together. So uh, on behalf of the ministerial, uh, I would uh, bring blessings on this very happy and exciting day for you all. And bring a challenge to keep on working for the months from Well, the reason I have my hat on is because I was told that what I was to do, I had to keep it under my hat. <laughs>
Or instead, if there's a place that I want to offer you the opportunity to, to get greedy. Well, we are the uh, unsuccessful new effort uh, that the uh, ELCA has not Still yet made. to be successful. <laughs> <laughs> but we are being faithful. Uh, I represent St. Mary's in Middletown. Uh, we're smaller, we're struggling, uh, we have great hopes, but uh, we have uh, regularly raised in our morning prayers the hope that uh, Community Lutheran will have this wonderful day to celebrate. And I'm happy to be here to celebrate, particularly with my friend Bob Warren. I know that we're tired and long as has Beverly and all the rest of you. Uh, maybe one day, uh, soon we hope, you'll join with us in a similar celebration at a site unknown, yet to be discovered. <laughs> <laughs> but God is richest blessings to you here at Unity Group. Thank you. Tim Ron, Chairperson of that steering committee is in here. I'm Gene Tupin, President of St. Paul's in Newark, Delaware. You saw me stand a few minutes ago as one of the members of the Ministry Planning Committee, so I've had a great deal of experience uh, with Bob and, and others in the room. It's my privilege today to bring you greetings from St. Paul's in Newark and to say best wishes to you on behalf of St. Paul's, and God bless you. My name is Ed Tress. I'm the pastor of the Lutheran Church of Our Savior in Rehoboth Beach. I bring you greetings today, not only from your brothers and sisters in Christ at uh, the Lutheran Church of Our Savior, but also I am John's counterpart in the Lutheran Church in Missouri City. And it's only appropriate, and that's, it's only appropriate that the leadership of the Delmarva Peninsula should come from Sussex County. <laughs> So when, when Jane said to John earlier, uh, or when John said rather that uh, uh, she really meant it when she said she was glad to turn over those reins, I, sat, I said to my wife, Amen. <laughs> I'd like to uh, bring you greetings, therefore, in, uh, on behalf of the 15 congregations of the Lutheran Church in Missouri Synod that make up the uh, Delmarva Circuit of our synod and all of our, the congregations of our synod. This is a real joyful moment, um, and uh, it's great that, uh, uh, that Jared mentioned earlier that you're only one of two congregations of, of this type that have a building, and what a joy that is. I'd also like to uh, indicate that uh, we are in an expansion program at the Lutheran Church of Our Savior. We will be breaking ground for our new edition on Sunday, August 14th uh, in the morning, and hope to be dedicating it early part of next year. So uh, we would like to re uh, return your invita gracious invitation that Bob sent to us, and uh, it's been my privilege to meet with Bob and with a group of you at uh, various uh, inter-congregational meetings at uh, two of them that we had uh, over the course of time. And, I, I'm really excited about this, and uh, even gave uh, gave over the daughter of one of our members to you, so you should know that. <laughs> so uh, God bless you all very much. Hi, um, I'm Paul Lundmark from Grace Church in Hocaston, Delaware. In Christ, there's no east or west, but we've represented the north and the south today. Uh, greetings from Grace and Hocaston. Uh, we actually did find uh, Omer. <laughs> For that, we give thanks. And, uh, <laughs> so our, our prayers and uh, our hopes are with you. Uh, we're so joyful for this community, Lutheran Church, and we share with you a great future. Thank you. I'm Kristen Schlegel from Reformation Lutheran Church, and it was a little intimidating 
for me to come in this afternoon because when I was younger, I had worship experience with a small church. It's always a little scary trying to sing with a small congregation because there's such a small voice. And you sort of stick out a little. And I must say, I was astounded and very moved when we walked in with the opening hymn because there's no small voice here. I'm sure they heard us beyond Homer. <laughs> My name is uh, Joe Bob. I'm the town manager of Ocean View. I know Bob for a long time. He gives me a hard time at town. I hope he doesn't give me the same here. <laughs> I doubt that he will because it's very helpful. But I just want to let you know from the town of Ocean View that we're sorry to see you leave Ocean View, but we're also happy that you have established a building here in Omar. God bless you and good luck to you all. At least 200 people know where Omar is now. <laughs> I have a letter from Zion Luther Church in Wellington. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, congratulations on your new church home. It is with great joy that the pastor and members of Zion Luther Church celebrate your growth in Christ and the planting of a new church. May grace abound among your members and in your ministry to the world. We will be with you in prayer on your dedication day and look forward to your achieving mission status. Yours in Christ, the Reverend Gregory R. Johnson Pastor. Anyone else? I don't dare let this day go by without letting you people know that there is somebody from that small section on the other side of the bay that's here today. <laughs>